Sit down. Sit down, Your Honor, beloved. If honor may be shrouded in a hearse, whilst I a while obsequiously lament the untimely fall of virtuous Lancaster. Poor key cold figure of a holy king, pale ashes of the house of Lancaster, the bloodless remnant of that royal blood. Be it lawful that I invocate thy ghost to hear the lamentations of poor Anne, wife to thy Edward, to thy slaughtered son, stabbed by the self-same hand that made these wounds flow in these windows that let forth thy life. I pour the helpless balm of my poor eyes. O cursed be the hand that made these holes. Cursed the heart that had the heart to do it. Cursed the blood that let this blood from hence more direful hepatide, that hated wretch that makes us wretched by the death of thee, than I could wish to wolves, to spiders, toads, or any creeping venom thing that lives. If ever he had child, abortive be it, prodigious and untimely brought to light, whose ugly and unnatural aspect may fright the hopeful mother at the view and that be heir to his unhappiness. If ever he have wife, let her be made more miserable by the death of him than I am made by my young lord in thee. Come, now towards Chertsey with your holy load, taken from Paul's to be interred there. Stay you that bear the corpse and set it down. What black magician conjures up this fiend to stop devoted terrible deeds? Villains, set down the corpse or by St. Paul or make a corpse of him that disobeys. My lord, stand back and let the coffin pass. On men a dog stands thou when I command. What? Do you tremble? Are you all afraid? Alas, I blame you not, for you are mortal, and mortal eyes cannot endure the devil. Avaunt, thou dreadful minister of hell. Thou hadst but power over his mortal body. His soul thou canst not have. Therefore be gone. Sweet saint, for charity be not so cursed. Foul devil, for God's sakes, hence, and trouble us not. So thou hast made the happy earth thy hell, filled it with cursing cries and deep exclaims. If thou delight to view thy heinous deeds, behold this pattern of thy butcheries. O oh, gentlemen, see, see dead Henry's wounds. Open their congealed mouths and bleed afresh. Blush, blush. Thou lump of foul deformity, but tis thy presence that exhales this blood from cold and empty veins where no blood dwells. Thy deeds, inhuman and unnatural, provokes this deluge most unnatural. O oh God, which this blood made, revenge his death. O oh earth, which this blood drinks, revenge his death. Either heaven with lightning strike the murderer dead, or earth gape up and wide and eat him quick, as thou the swallow of this good king's blood, which his hell-governed arm hath butchered. Lady, you know no rules of charity, which renders good for bad, blessings for curses. Villain, thou knowest nor law of God, nor man. No beast so fierce, but knows some touch of pity. But I know none, and therefore am no beast. 
How wonderful when devils tell the truth. More wonderful when angels are so angry. Vouchsafe divine perfection of a woman. Of these supposed crimes to give me leave but to excuse myself. Vouchsafe diffused infection of a man. Of these known evils but by circumstance to give thee leave. The curse thy curse itself. Fairer than tongue can name thee, let me have some patient leisure to excuse myself. Fowler than heart can thee. Thou canst make no excuse current, but to hang thyself. By such despair I should accuse myself. And by despairing shalt thou be excused for doing worthy vengeance on thyself, the didst unworthy slaughter upon others. Say that I slew them not. And say they were not slain, but dead they are, a devilish slave by I, thee. I did not kill your husband. Why, then he is alive. Nay, he is dead and slain by Edward's head. Thou foul throat, thou liest. Queen Margaret saw thy murderous falchion smoking in his blood, the which thou once didst bend against her breast but that thy brothers be beside the point. I was provoked by her slanderous tongue, which laid their guilt on my guiltless shoulders. Thou was provoked by thy bloody mind, that never dreams on aught but butcheries. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant you. Dost grant me, hedgehog? Then God grant me too. Thou mayst be damned for that wicked deed. He was gentle, mild, and virtuous. The better for the king of heaven that hath him. He is in heaven, where thou shalt never come. Then let him thank me, that hope to send him thither, for he was fitter for that place than earth. And thou art fit for any place but hell. Yes, one place else, if you will hear me name it. Some dungeon. My bedchamber. Ill respite tide, the chamber where thou liest. So will it, madam till I lie with thee. I hope so. I know so. Gentle Lady Anne, to leave this keen encounter of our wits and fall something into a slower method. Is not the causer of the untimely deaths of these Plantagenets, Henry and Edward, as much to blame as the executioner? Thou was the cause and most accursed effect. Thy beauty was the cause of that effect. Thy beauty that did haunt me in my sleep to undertake the death of all the world, that I might live one hour in your sweet bosom. If I thought that, I tell thee, homicide, these nails should rend that beauty from my cheeks. These eyes could ne'er endure that beauty's wreck. You should not blemish it if I stood by, as all the world is cheered by the sun, as I by that. It is my day, my life. Black night or shave thy day, and death thy life. Do not curse yourself, fair creature. Thou art both. I would I were to be revenged on thee. Tis a quarrel most unnatural to be revenged on him that loveth thee. Tis a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him that killed my husband. He that bereft thee, lady, of thy husband did it to help thee to a better husband. His better doth not breathe upon the earth. He lives that loves thee better than he could. Name him. Plantagenet. Why, that was he. The selfsame name, but one of better nature. Where is he? Here. Why dost thou spit at me? What it were mortal poison for thy sake? Never came poison from so sweet a place. Never hung poison on a fowler toad. Out of my sight, that does infect mine eyes. Thine eyes, sweet lady, have infected mine. Would they were basilics to strike thee dead. I would they were, for now, that I might die at once. For now they kill me with a living death. Those eyes of thine for mine have drawn salt tears, shaved their aspect with store of childish drops. These eyes, which never shed remorse, I, I never suit to friend nor enemy. My lip can never learn sweet smoothing word. But now thy beauty proposes my fee. My heart sues and prompts my tongue to speech. Teach not thy lip such scorn, for it was made for kissing, lady, not for such contempt. But if thy revengeful heart cannot forgive, lo, I lend thee this sharp pointed sword, which if thou please, to hide in this true breast, and let forth the soul that abhorreth thee, I lay naked to the deadly stroke, 
and beg the death upon my knee. Nay, do not pause, for I did kill King Edward, but t'was thy duty that provoked me. Nay, dispatch, t'was I that stabbed young Edward, but t'was thy heavenly face that sent me on. <coughs> take up the sword again, or take up me. Arise, dissembler, though I wish thy death, I will not be thy executioner. Then bid me kill myself, and I will do it. I have already. That was in thy rage. Speak it again, and even with the word, this hand, which for thy love did kill thy love, will for thy love kill a far truer love. To both their deaths thou shalt be accessory. I would I knew thy heart. Just figured in my tongue. I fear me both are false. Then never man was true. No. I'll put up your sword. And say my peace is made. That shalt thou know hereafter. But shall I live in hope? All men, I hope, live so. To take this ring. Take is not to give. Look how my ring encompasses thy finger. Even so, thy breast encloseth my poor heart, where both of them, for both of them are thine. And if your poor devoted servant may but beg one favor at thy gracious hand, thou dost confirm his happiness forever. What is it? That if it may please you to leave these sad designs for him that hath most cause to be a mourner and repair you presently at Crosby House, where after I, at Church's monastery, interred this noble king and wed his grave with my repentant tears, I will with all expedient duty see you. For divers unknown reasons, I do beseech you grant me this boon. With all my heart, and much it joys me too, to see you all become so penitent Bid me farewell. Tis more than you deserve. But since you teach me how to flatter you, imagine I have said farewell already. 